Hi also, another bit of breaking news. From my point of view, at like 10 to 3 in the morning, so I'm going to keep my voice down. So don't upset the neighbours. Um, Exorcists have weighed in again with some criticism of the Blizzard development team with regards to Mythic Tumor Sargeras. Now, I was going to do a bit of a review of Mythic Tumor Sargeras myself, uh, but I don't want to go into what I sort of feel about it. I want to focus on what Exorcists have said, because in some regards, I am absolutely going to back them up to the hilt. I have got one little query about where their blame is directed, but by and large, they have definitely got a point. I know some people disagree with it. Now, what sparks all this off, of course, is that Blizzard have just announced with some hot fixes for the new reset, which includes a nerf to Fallen Avatar's health on Mythic difficulty. It also includes four nerfs to kill Jaden on Mythic difficulty. Now, obviously, in particular on the last two bosses, what has happened is, as we all know, anyone who's followed the race, I say we all know, anyone who's followed the race knows that Method and Exorcist, of course, led the way. Method killed Kill Jaden eight days ago. Exorcist only killed it yesterday, a week later. No one else has killed those bosses, and it might well be that no one else could kill those bosses in their current form for at least another week or so. This is not normally how things go. Now, I know that some of you will go, oh, who cares? It's a few small guilds. Uh, I am going to get onto that, um, and we should care if we care about anything at all. So, looking at it, um, both of those bosses took a lot of wipes for, for two guilds who are really set up to go ultra hardcore. And I mean not just putting in the time, but the level of preparation and planning that's required to go into those bosses. They prepare with military precision. They do ridiculous numbers of split runs, like ridiculous numbers. They farm massive amounts of Mythic Plus to get themselves the best gear they possibly can. In fact, there was a point, uh, if I remember rightly, where it was noted that Method, at a certain point of Fallen Avatar, sort of basically left it just to go into Mythic Plus and try and farm even more gear, get some more Titan Forge gear, because it just wasn't going over. And that's why that nerf to the health is potentially all you need, because if you look at, obviously I've not experienced Mythic Avatar, but if you look at it, the actual each individual mechanic is not horrendous to deal with. What's difficult to deal with a fight like that is dealing with the mechanics whilst maintaining a ridiculous amount of DPS. It's the sort of fight that a lot of us shouldn't have to worry about because by the time we get to it, and especially ones who are chasing the curve rather than ahead of the curve, no pun intended, um, will find that if the DPS check is not non-existent, then you can deal with the mechanics. It doesn't matter if you lose DPS. Who cares? Deal with the mechanics, and if the boss will still die before any sort of soft or hard in rage, then what's the big deal? Uh, the same thing happened with Elisand and Gul'dan. By the time my guild got up to those things, neither of those bosses was that difficult because the DPS checks weren't there. Our gear was so much better. We had uh, the new traits from 7.2, so we were able to polish those bosses off very quickly. They were not as difficult as the people were killing it within the first few weeks. So what happened was, so for, for Avatar, for example, both Method and Exorcist needed round about 500 wipes on it. Method a bit under 500, uh, Exorcist a little bit over. So between them, about a 1,000 pulls on it. Now, I don't know how many of those might be aborted ninja pulls, but let's assume they were all proper pulls. That is an excessive number of pulls. You could argue for anyone on any boss, but certainly for a top guild, for these guys who know absolutely everything there is about getting ready for a raid tier, that's a ridiculous amount. And that's the second to last boss. On the last boss itself, you're talking for method, it was around about 650-ish pulls. That is a beast of a number. But for Exorcist, much closer to a 1,000 pulls. And here's the other thing. This is where I do say that we should have some sympathy for even those top girls. Now, because I've already argued before, and this argument is still relevant, that it's not just we're not just talking about two or three guilds here. Apart from anything else, the particular issues with Tumor Sargeras Mythic have affected anyone who's raided Mythic. Even if you attempted Mythic Goroth in the first week and didn't kill it, that what Blizzard have done in this tier has affected you as well, negatively affected you. But let's focus on these two. For a start, it's not just those two guilds. There's a lot of people who watch them and are fans of them. It affects those as well. That's more people. But here's the other thing, like. When I think about what I sacrifice to be able to do Mythic Raiding, it's a few nights a week. That's what I sacrifice. I commit to being there three nights a week. 
and, uh, and and that if I can't make it for a good reason, I don't just randomly decide not to raid. If I can't make it for a good reason, then I give them advance notice. That's what I sacrifice. It's not that much. What these guys sacrifice is immense. People, again, I have to tackle this. People get the view that these guys are life or Riley. They're just playing games all day. And as if someone's magically giving them money. Oh, here, money, money, money. No. A small number of them may well be self-funding through their streaming activities and so on. The vast majority of these guys are not getting money for their gaming. They've got jobs. They need to get their own money. Um, you know, and so what happens is they book time off work when a new raid tier comes out. They end up, they make sure they've, I mean, that's a sacrifice in itself. Some of these may not have high profile jobs. They may have jobs that just allow them to subsist. But ones where that work is flexible enough that they can, at relatively short notice, book time off because they don't always get a lot of notice of when a raid tier is going to be released. So they have to make sure they can't just turn up and go, oh, sorry, guys, I can't actually get the time booked off. Janine got in first at work. No, they need a job where they can book that time off. Book a couple of weeks off because that's how long it generally takes. Because you can see with this, so so as I said, Method took 650 pulls on it. Now, Exorcist were behind Method, but they weren't massively behind because of the way that the, the time they sort of killed it. But it took them an extra week to kill it. And that would have been with an extra reset worth of gear, remember. And the number of pulls in that extra week that they had was roughly 300. Now, they could easily manage well over 300 pulls on that boss in a week. So what's clearly happened is they've massively had to step down their rating in that third week. Why? Because they've got to go back to work. So they're putting all that sacrifice... And, and here's, I'm going to show you two of the comments that Exorcists have tweeted tonight. One of them I'm fully in support of. One of them I'm partially in support of. So the first one is, they've said that the hotfix changes are showing a complete disrespect to all efforts of top guilds. Free testers have done their job, wasting a month of their life. And it's the wasting the month of their life that we should have, should have sympathy for. These guys are sacrificing so much. They're not just playing the game a lot. That's all people see, that they're playing the game a lot. That's not the limit of their sacrifice. That's relatively minor. Some of these guys may well be sacrificing lucrative careers or putting it on hold for now. You know, as I say, then they're needing jobs that allow them that flexibility to take time off. And that means that they might, you know, these are intelligent players who, who could well be getting themselves into high-powered uh, careers and then potentially putting that off for their raiding career and then go and do something later and and it on the one hand of course it's deflating for a guild these guilds have got world second at the end of the day uh, and they've had world first this this expansion a couple of times and it's obviously deflating but because someone was asking me on the stream when this news broke and they were saying you know isn't it didn't they just go off the boil because method got there first well they've been used to this this happens for a guild if you're in the world first race there is going to be a time when someone beats you to it. Yes, it's deflating. Maybe you go for an early night. You just stop the raid there and chill for a bit. But then you get back on it. You get back on the horse. Because you don't want someone else taking your world second. Because then that becomes important. And also, it's the time you killed it. It's much better to be able to say, OK, we didn't get world first, but we were only a day behind them. Completely different when you've got to say you were a week behind them. And it is showing disrespect as well. Because what Blizzard have done... At the simple, I'll explain it in the simplest level in a way that everyone can appreciate, whether you've done it on heroic or mythic or whatever. As is known, on mythic mode, eight out of the nine bosses have soak mechanics. You know, it's been a bit of a meme. Now, there's two main types of soak mechanic in there. There's the one that's just an area of effect where people just pile in and stand on a spot. There's the other one, like the Hydra Shot of Mistress Asin, where you stand in a line. These mechanics are almost as old as the game itself. The first such soak mechanics that I remember was on Trash in Anchorage that drops like a comet thing and you all had to sort of stand in it. So that the, and, and these mechanics all work in the same way. They do a certain amount of damage that is going to kill someone. But it's split across anyone in an area. So everyone piles in and that damage is split and you negate it. That's how Blizzard want us to deal with it. But for as long as these mechanics have existed... It's always inconvenient to pile in and share that damage because it reduces your damage on the boss or the mob or whatever it is. So whenever possible, 
players have always sought to try and solo soak them with a powerful defensive. That's the way, that's the standard way it's dealt with. These days in raids, there are very few genuinely new mechanics. You know, the fog um, effect on Kill Jaden is sort of a newish mechanic, that's fairly new. But the vast majority of the mechanics in these raid tiers, they put them together in innovative ways. They're very creative, they're very good. But when you break it down, all the mechanics, apart from that fog that we've seen in this expansion, we've seen in this tier, sorry, we've seen before, they've existed before. And the way we deal with them is the same. So a soak mechanic is dealt with. Can we get someone to solo soak it? Yes, then we're going to do that. So for Blizzard to turn around and change certain aspects to stop us doing that, that is suggestive that they didn't consider this in the planning stage. Have they raided in World of Warcraft before? I know they have. So I really don't understand why that is. And this is where it comes to my second, the second tweet that Exorcist gave out. So they've said here that TOS overall showed the encounter design team completely have no idea what's the tuning plan for the encounters with a sarcastic well played <laughs> um now i support if they were to change that instead of encounter design team to blizzard then i would fully support that as an organization because that's ridiculous that is absolutely ridiculous that some of the things there are i i'm there's certain things where I could understand it's the result of not enough time. Because this is, I mean, I actually tweeted a reply to this um, to suggest maybe it wasn't the encounter design team for some of these things. It was for others, like the soak mechanics. That's totally their fault because they should know how players are going to deal with them. If they don't like that, someone should have said that at the planning stage and it should have been dealt with before it ever went live. You shouldn't have a situation where the top guilds are clearing so many bosses in the first reset come around to the second reset and are having to reprogress on a boss because you've completely changed the way it works. Mistress Sassine on Mythic was one example where they completely changed it. A method burst through it in the first week and actually had to do proper progress on it in the second. Um, that's not on. Uh, and it's particularly harsh because Blizzard dealt, uh, sorry, Method dealt with it. It's particularly harsh on guilds who are not at methods level, but are nonetheless really pushing it. Maybe they've come to Tomb of Sargos going, do you know what, we're gonna go hardcore. We're really gonna push it. And they've got through that boss in the first week. Yeah, great. And then on the second week, they're stuck because they've got to do it again. Cause it's like a new encounter that's suddenly been plonked in there. And, and that's not, that's very deflating and that's not on. But my thought on this is maybe because when I talked about the fact, I, I've talked already before that Tomb of Sargeras for me didn't feel ready. Like normally in Heroic, it was great. First week when that came, I thought that was fantastic. But the mythic encounters are clearly not ready when it was released. And someone suggested to me, and I don't play Final Fantasy anymore, it's not my sort of thing. But someone suggested to me maybe Blizzard wanted to bring it out when they did to basically cock block um, the developers of Final Fantasy on, I, I don't know, was some new uh, expansion for that come out or not? I don't know. Um, and it is possible game developers do sometimes do that rush something through to try and, as I say, screw over a competitor. And, and has that happened? And is it that it's not the encounter development team, but maybe the Blizzard money men and women who have said, look, you know, we want you to get it out in this window now. You've got a reduced deadline to get this stuff done. Um, so, for example, with the overtuning of Avatar, because you've got to think about with Avatar, Avatar is all about that high DPS check while doing mechanics that make it very difficult to do that. If you undertuned Avatar's health just slightly, you could make the fight a joke. Because if you, like a lot of guilds, will, a lot of the guilds that are gonna take a long time to get up to that point, are gonna find that Avatar's not a difficult boss. Because as soon as you have a situation where the DPS is not a problem, you just have to deal with the mechanics, the boss becomes easy. Because all you have to do is go, never mind DPS, deal with the mechanics. Once the mechanics have been dealt with, then get your DPS back on the boss. As soon as you can do that, the boss is trivial. So it was very important that it was tuned tightly so that it was very difficult to kill it unless you were able to really push and min-max dealing with the mechanics, but at the same time not losing DPS doing so. That's how that boss encounter works. But then you can ask yourself, should they have designed a boss like that 
um, if there was ever going to be any doubt about the amount of time they would be given to test it because it's one of those things you test if you under tune it like I say you make it too trivial if you over tune it you make it impossible and then kill Jaden itself we expect the last boss especially on mythic mode to have some wrinkles to iron out because they don't do the external testing because they want to keep it a surprise they actually don't want people doing a lot of testing on that difficulty on that boss in the PTR so sometimes yeah that can be a bit of an iffy one but the other bosses in my mind it is disrespectful to the player base uh, and it's not just the top guilds I think it's disrespectful for everyone that does that content um, so I am supportive of that however I'm not supportive of, of laying the blame at someone's feet unless you absolutely know it is and the only blame I think that you can categorically lay at the feet of the encounter design team are where they've made changes re related to these soak mechanics because that was just stupid <laughs> that was just so naive that it was unbelievable um, but in terms of the tuning of the last two bosses were they given enough time maybe they weren't and maybe we're blaming the wrong people but anyway those are my thoughts I'm not going to keep rambling on uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and until next time I'll see you later